Hey y'all, and welcome back to another episode of TZ Teaches. I'm Sir Pinkbeard, and in this video, we're going to do a video walkthrough of creating a basic sword like you might see in any standard video game. I think this is a great first project, and as a caveat, I'm only going to be using tools that we've used up to this point in the video playlist. So I'm not going to be doing anything extra or anything extra special. This is just to give you an idea of how to use the tools now that we've covered all of that information in the course. So this is going to be a stream of consciousness walkthrough, so I want to apologize in advance for the ums and any extra weirdness that may occur while we make our model. But this is our starter sword, and so let's go ahead and generate a new object and get started. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. Let's just move this off to the left. Um, and I guess we'll need to do more than five. Let's move it off 15 units to the left and uh, begin by just switching into first person orthographic or front view orthographic rather. We'll hit shift A to add in a cube and now we've got a cube at the same position. Now, I am not going to use any additional objects. We're just going to make this object from the cube. So first thing I'm gonna do, if we take a look at this, we have some uh, handle here, a pretty big and prominent handle. So what I'll do is we'll just go ahead and grab the faces on each side and then use the extrude along normals tool. When we select that, if we click and drag and then type in five and hit enter, it's going to move each side five units to or in their direction along their normals. So now all I have to do is just grab the top faces Oh, and I accidentally deselected those, and then scale those along the z-axis to a roughly 0.5, and that should give me exactly what I'm looking for as far as the width of the uh, guard that we're going to create. Now, we do need um, a little spike along each side, and we'll need one in the middle, so let's go ahead and start with that middle piece, and I'll just go ahead and add one in here, so we'll add in an edge loop by hitting Control R. And once we've added in that edge loop, we'll just grab the, we'll switch to our uh, selection. We'll grab the top edge here and we'll move this up and to, along the Z axis, constrain it to the Z axis until we're satisfied with the height. Now this is not going to be an identical model, but that's pretty close. All right, now what we're gonna do, we'll grab these two vertices right here, and what we'll do is we'll hit J to join them. Now that accidentally created too much, so let's do that one at a time. We'll hit J to join those together, and J to join these together. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just dissolve this edge, and dissolve this edge. Um, I'll do the same thing here, and here, and here. So now I've got triangles at the top, and quad faces all the way around. And now I can actually, if we look at this from the right hand side, we can, well, we could line this up. So let's move this up a little bit higher along the Z till it roughly covers it. And then we'll scale it in along the Y until it's about the same width. That should be good. All right, next, um, let's just switch into vertex. So let's see if we have any extra vertices sticking around from that, and we do not. So we can add in the little side guards here the side little spikes. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll grab the loop cut tool and just place one, place one, and then we'll grab another, place that one there, and place that one there. Then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and clean this up. So we'll switch back to the selection tool, grab this, dissolve those edges, grab that, dissolve those edges, and then we can grab both of these and move them up along the z-axis till they're roughly where we want them to be. Now when we do that, we notice that the rest of them are coming, uh, or the rest of the guard is coming up with it. I want it to stay flat, so we'll right click to cancel that transformation. And actually I'm now aware that my shortcuts aren't on, or my uh, my key presses aren't on, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn those on and then leave them activated from here on out. So what we need to do is we'll grab the loop cut tool again, and we'll just left click and left click. And then we're gonna go ahead and move these, and so we'll edge slide them. So what we'll do is instead of grabbing the edge slide tool, uh, I'll just hit GG, 0.5, and then we'll go in the negative direction and do the same thing over here. 
where we grab this edge loop, gg.5, negative direction. And now we can actually grab these and move them up along the z-axis. And that's going to get us close enough. Now, uh, it's not actually the exact same. I think if we wanted to get it uh, completely correct, we would need to move these 0.75 and do the same thing with this, gg.75. And then now, uh, this should move up in the right direction. Yeah, that's pretty close. Maybe it was just 0.7, but it doesn't really matter. It's okay either way. We'll grab the two side edges and move those down along the Z until roughly at the median point of the X axis. And now we've got our guard done. Well, with the exception of these two edges, which need to be uh, scaled in on the y-axis so we'll scale that in a little bit on the y-axis and we should be good now here's the thing when we make that scale in you can kind of see what happens to these faces they don't really line up well so we'll do that joining thing again we'll grab these two hit j and hit j and then we'll grab the vertices on each side hit gg move them all the way up oh, hold on let's do this GG, and then move it in this direction so they're both in the same place. And then we can look at this, and since this line is, should be straight now, we'll hit GG one more time, and just try to line it up as straight as possible. And now those faces look a little bit more like flat, and then they go in. And that's the look that I want. Uh, I realize it might not be the most physically um, or aesthetically pleasing, but it is good enough for this tutorial. All right, so once again, we'll just GG, move it all the way up so that it splits, and then GG.5 in the negative. Let's see if it works. Ah, because there's three edges, it won't, so we'll have to manually place it, and we'll just try to straighten it back out as close as possible. Now our guard is done, and we are ready to move on to the blade and the handle. So let's start with the handle because it's pretty quick. So we'll grab this, and we'll hit inset, 0.25, and that should be good, uh, but let's go ahead, instead of making it so square, let's just move this in a little bit on the y-axis. So we'll scale this in the y direction. This way, the two other edges stay the exact same uh, width as well. They're not staying the exact same width, but they're staying the same distance apart from each other. They're not getting smaller. And then we can just scale in those edges. And now we can grab this and say extrude this down seven and there we go we have the beginnings of our handle and we'll go ahead and stop here with the handle and come back to it later all right so once more we'll grab our loop cut and we'll just click and add in and we'll add in one more time um, and this is going to give us our edge loop for the um, I don't want to extrude those let's go ahead and dissolve these edges for the edge of the blade. So uh, we're gonna go with this, and so let's go ahead and just grab these faces here and right click and subdivide them. Now that ends us up with quite a few extra vertices and um, to be honest, we're not going to be using them all, but what I wanna do is we just wanna mark in the blade. So I'm gonna grab these two edges up here at the top and we'll just subdivide this and since we have create ingons on, it's just going to put a single vertice in the center here and in the center here. So I'll just grab one of these vertices and hit K, and then that brings up the knife tool. So once we have the knife tool up, if you hit C with the knife tool active, you'll actually get this nice degree marker. It goes every 45 degrees and it draws that white line. So we'll say this is 90 degrees, and uh, we'll take this all the way to there and hit enter to confirm that. Now something I do want to point out before we go any further is that the 90 degrees is based on the viewport. So this is straight according to the view angle, but it's not actually straight. So you want to make sure when you cut like this, you are in an orthographic mode. So we are, can be in orthographic, hit C, and we'll take this all the way to here. Hit enter. Knife tool from here, this side and this side as well. All right, now one last cut to actually give us the blade edge. So we'll, we won't hit C this time, we'll just take it to the corner vertex there, and there, hit E, 
knife tool here to here and back. And now we're ready. And so now we have these extra faces here. So we'll switch into face select, control to select all the way down, shift to start the next row and control to select all the way back. Then we can look at this from the, let's look at it from the front, not the right. And we will extrude this up just enough so that the bottom edge goes past the little triangle that we've set up as far as the um, joint connector for where the blade meets the guard. And then this is a trick that we haven't talked about, but if you wanted to scale all of those vertices to a median point, if you hit scale, Z, or whatever axis you're trying to scale it on, and then zero, it's going to find the median point of all of those vertices and then move them to that. So they're all scaled now to zero on the Z axis, which means they're even along the Z. Okay, now before we go any further, what I am going to do is I'm just going to clean up some of these edges. Like I don't need this edge loop that got created when we subdivided it. So I'll just go ahead and dissolve those edges now, and we'll keep the rest of these. Uh, we do have an issue, though. Since this face uh, is a tri or this face is an N-gon, and this face is an N-gon. So what we can do is if we hit Control t we will clean that up. Control T, we'll clean that up as well. So we'll go ahead and just clean up the rest of these faces with Control T. And it triangulates those faces for us. And now we're good. And we're keeping our model very ingon free. All right, so let's actually go ahead and make the, uh, the sword piece here. So we'll go ahead and grab these again. Control click selects um, the most efficient path as far as the algorithm is concerned between the two faces. Look at this from the front, and uh, we'll just extrude this up by hitting the E key, and we'll take it to roughly there. I want to say that's actually 20, exactly, if I remember correctly, which that looks to be the right height. And then we need to make our sword point. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just delete all of those faces, grab the edge loop, and fill that in. And the reason I'm going to do that is because the way that we create a sword point uh, is pretty simple. Okay, that took it too far. So what we do, just grab the middle vertices, we'll join them together, and then start joining these. So that creates our center vertex, and then if we select through, you'll notice they're all going through that center vertex there. And so we can just oppose, uh, grab opposing sides or opposite sides and hit J, and now we've got it lined up. Grab the single vertex in the center that we created through all of that, and just move that up on the Z-axis to right about there. And we've basically got our sword done. Now the last thing we have to do is this handle. Um, you don't want to hold a square handle in battle. That just seems like a bad idea. So we'll go ahead and grab uh, all of these edge selects or uh, that's an edge ring select, control alt. I've got an upcoming video on that, but that hasn't dropped yet as of this moment. So we'll select all of those edges and grab the bevel tool and kind of bevel that out a little bit and then increase the segment so there's some rounding on that and maybe increase the amount just a little bit yeah that looks fine all right and then to keep our model and gone free we'll look at the bottom face here and realize this bottom face has uh, 12 vertices or rather this face has 12 vertices attached to it. So what we'll do is switch in and we'll just kind of clean this up so that we can remove the end gone. We'll join these together with the J key. And then we'll join these together. And now we have one quad, two quad, three, four. And then we've got our quad, quad cross at the bottom here. And then let's switch into select mode. We'll grab these faces right here. Look at this from the front and we will extrude the region. So we'll just extrude it down and then we'll scale it out a little bit, extrude down again, extrude out a little, or scale out a little bit, extrude down. Maybe we'll leave that one in place. We'll scale this one in a little, one more time and a little. All right, and then that should be good. So, and then the last thing we do to make this one look like that. We will uh, just shade it smooth by right clicking and hitting shade smooth and then coming over here to normals 
or to object data and then normals and clicking auto smooth. And we will, I will cover that in a separate video series. But now we have the starter sword walkthrough complete. And that's essentially how you use um, the tools that we've talked about. Now, if you found this video helpful, that's awesome, and I'm glad it helped you. We, I will have some more videos coming very soon um, in the next couple of weeks to cover some more tools that make things a little bit easier, things like snapping, um, how to use the pivot point, proportional editing, and things that would have made this model, if we were able to use it, a lot faster. Um, and that was pretty fast, but this would have made it a, lot, a little bit faster to use if we had had access to some of the other tools. So keep checking out the channel. I'm hoping to put videos out um, at least every Thursday. And what I'm trying to get for every Tuesday and Thursday for something new with Blender. So I hope you enjoyed this video walkthrough of how to create a basic sword weapon using the tools we've only covered in the playlist so far. And if you did, I hope to see you in the next video. I'm Sir Pinkbeard, and I'll see you later.